All right, guys. So today we're doing a heater core, and we're doing the evaporator core. I'm fairly certain the evaporator core on this truck is leaking because it loses Freon within about five days, six days, and um, I can't find a leak under the hood anywhere. So I assume that it's coming from there. I've looked up in there, and it looks really nasty, like it's corroded and shit, and it's got stuff all over it. So we're gonna pull the dash on this truck. You've got your screws across the top. There's one, two, three, four, five. Those look like a seven or an eight millimeter. I think those are sevens. And then you've got your two right up there. Oh, can you fucking, yeah, right there. That little doohicker right there. So both those on both sides. And then you've got one on this side, one bolt right there on this side and one bolt on the other side. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there's uh, some under the column. And what I like to do is I like to take the columns completely out and get them out of the way. Unless sometimes you can s slide that back and you can collapse, you can push the column in and you can drop it and just leave it in the floorboard. Some people like doing that. I like doing it the other way. I like it up and out of my way completely. I'll just dis uh, disconnect the linkage and stuff. So. That's that, and uh, when I get a little bit further to apart, then uh, I'll talk to you all about some more stuff that's going on with it. And so, here we go. This is where we start. Oh, and you're probably aware most of my dash is completely gone. Um, it just falls apart. There's nothing I can do about it, so just have to uh, roll with punches and keep going and not worry about it. Um, I have a carpet cover that works pretty good. It is what it is. So, all right, we'll see you uh, in a little bit. Okay, so, we had to get a fan. It's uh, 98 degrees today. So, or 98 degrees now. It was uh, 102 today. So, what we've done, pretty much, you can see, I didn't even disconnect nothing, which I probably should have and could have, but the dash is so broken, and I don't give a shit about nothing on this truck, other than, I mean, obviously I had to disconnect some wires and stuff that were in the way. Um, but for the most part, it kind of just picks up and moves over. You have to disconnect the, uh, the, uh, airbag. Oh, shit, 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 shit. It's falling. Nah. See? This is live, live action stuff here. Alright, so. We got that up far enough. There's some screw, there's some bolts around the case. We got to disconnect both the lines on the inside and then both the AC lines and then um, the bolts around it and this whole case will come off. So uh, this is basically where we're at right now and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. By the way, this took me uh, about an hour. So sweet. Okay, so, turn the fan off so y'all can hear. So, uh, we got to get all this stuff disconnected under the hood. So, first thing I did was disconnect it. I don't have my gauges with me, so I just let as much of it out, and then I disconnected it. It blew up everywhere. I don't give a shit. Uh, so, you disconnect this from that. Unplug this. There's two, these two lines go in. And then on the side, you got this clamp that holds the uh, accumulator. You take it, it's a 10 millimeter bolt, you take that clamp loose. Then with those released, then you can wiggle it back and forth and pull it off. Once this is off, you gotta unplug these. Take your ECM out behind it. There's a bolt or two, I think, I, I can't remember. But the bracket, and this whole big piece of bracket comes off. And the reason why you gotta take the bracket off is because there's bolts behind it that hold the case to the cab it goes through the through the through the firewall and holds the box to the cab so you probably have to take those off and then uh, obviously we got our heater lines we got to do those those are ginormous pain in the butt but luckily I have a special clamp tool for those um, a clamp tool you get an AutoZone they got one one's got two fingers the other's got a cup so it'll get on those factory clamps you can squeeze it wiggle it comes right off pretty simple if you don't you have to do the old-fashioned way with a pair of pliers a pair of pliers suck but if that's all you got that's all you got so 
uh, let's get all this stuff pulled out of the way and then uh, we'll see you again. Alright, so I know the fan's on, but we got the uh, air box out. This is your heater core. Right here. Those two screws, clamps, hold that down. You got a screw there. This slides out. Once I get that out, now I won't have to worry about it leaking everywhere. You flip it upside down. You flip it upside down and there's screws. Oh, sorry. Screws. Boom, 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 boom. They're all the way around it. And you'll have to make sure you pay attention to your routing of your vacuum lines. That's your vacuum for your... Uh, that's your recirculation actuator. This turns outside air into inside air like that we have another one over here this is for floor and your uh, vents and stuff not gonna get too technical because I don't know exactly how everything works but you get the idea so we'll take the heater core out get it out of the way so we don't have to worry about it leaking all over the bench then we'll turn it upside down and we'll start taking everything apart and we'll get the heater or the, we'll get the evaporator core out All right, so if you're ever wondering why mechanics buy expensive tools and one of these little impact driver deals, uh, I've got a Craftsman one, just my buddies. But this is why. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. So you can spend all day unscrewing these damn things. I can get you a little drill. Just like that. And if I wasn't holding a damn camera, obviously. Oh no, it fell in. That's okay. But anyways, you get the point. There's screws all the way around. You'll have one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. So you got all these damn screws. This little doohicker right here. Make your life a lot easier. Where'd that one go? Eh, I'll find it. It's around here somewhere. Hopefully it's not in in the oil bucket. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> so anyways, uh, we got the heater core out. By the way... I have the video running. I wouldn't even replace it for the heater core, but whenever you're doing a condenser or any kind of any pull in the dash, it's a good idea to go ahead and do both. This little bastard was $60 at uh, Napa, and I almost didn't buy it, and I'm kind of glad I did because, as you can see, the trail's running down it. This sucker has been leaking. Not enough that I noticed, but uh, definitely an air pocket in there. And the bad thing about these heater cores is anytime they get air pockets in them, they don't work as efficiently. If you only have this much of the heater core actually holding water, that only that much of it's going to work, you're not getting your fuel full potential. Not only to add to that, this uh, this particular one was clogged last year, and uh, <clears throat> I hooked up the, I blew it out, and then I hooked up the heater lines backwards and let it run all summer long, and uh, it worked a lot better so that's one thing to think of so if you're doing something this in in depth uh, you probably want to do that another thing to point out too is you've got this vacuum line and that controls your going to the vents up top going out towards you or going out towards the floor one of the problems with these dodges is their vacuum systems aren't the greatest in the world and if you've ever been in one and you stomp on the gas and you notice how it'll change and go to the go to the go to your uh, um, vents out the top, uh, you could have a vacuum leak. So it's not a bad idea to inspect your lines, all these lines here, inspect them, and look and check for any cracks or any kind of damage um, while you're here, because you can make an easy repair with a little bit of vacuum line, and vacuum line's pretty cheap. It's easy to do now because this is completely hidden this is in between the, the firewalls right here 
So you'd never see that ever. So that's something to think of when you're working on these. Um, so anyways, we're going to get back to it, pull some more screws out, and um, I'll, I'll start another video whenever I get the uh, actual core pulled out. Okay, guys, so we got the top half pulled off. Pretty simple stuff. You got to wiggle it a little bit, but it comes right off. But oh my goodness gracious, look at this evaporator core, man. I have never seen one that clogged up with grime and mud and, oh man, that is horrible. And I'd always complain that this thing, this, I mean it blew cold, but it wasn't like freezing cold. And it didn't seem to have good airflow. And man, Jesus Christ, alright. And as you can see, there's a little bit of green tint to it. That's AC dye, from what I can tell. I'm pretty sure that's AC dye. So I'm pretty sure I was correct in my diagnosis of replacing this. Only time will tell after I replace it, but we'll get it out and I'll, I'll have a little bit more detailed look at it. I tell you, I have never, ever, ever seen anything like this. Now granted, this is leaking. It needs to be replaced, which is good, you know. So my heat is going to be phenomenal. Uh, the kit I got from Napa, or the parts I got from Napa, doesn't come with this foam shit. So we're going to hop in Little Blue. I'm going to leave my Dodge here, but we're going to hop in Little Blue, run up the store, and go get us the foam stuff that we need. And I'm going to take these heater cores with me. These new pieces, these old pieces with me so I can get the right stuff that I'm going to need. So, but that's not what's baffling. This is what's baffling. This is a new one. Right? And this is what came out. My goodness, guys. That is just... I'm blown away. I've never... I've been working on cars for 10 years. And I have never seen an evaporator core this bad, this nasty. And if you see the green, see the green stuff, that's AC dye. And I haven't been able to locate the leak. I, I knew it was this evaporator core. I knew it was. So I made a good decision on my part to uh, eva replace the evaporator core. I might go get a uh, orifice tube as well because I'm doing all this stuff. And I'm not, you know, it's one of those things when in, when you're there, you might as well do it. Uh, that's not part of this repair. The uh, orifice tube is under the hood. I may do it, I may not. It depends on the price. If it's a dollar, fifty, or two dollars, I'll do it. If not, then I ain't gonna mess with it. Uh, if it's you know fifteen, twenty bucks. Uh, this was forty-five, I think, and this was like fifty-five or sixty. So it come out to like a hundred bucks. So that's it. We're gonna shut down the shop. We're on the parts store. Go get some foam stuff because this the uh, these evaporator cores and stuff. They work, but they're they're way more efficient when you buy the foam. A lot of people will just say screw it, they'll just throw it in there, no foam, whatever. Not no nah, nah, I'm not not my style. I'll probably even I don't know if I can get this wrap stuff off here. If I can, I'll try to get it off and reuse it. This foam stuff that goes around. Because the more insulated this is, the better it performs. The cooler it stays and the better it performs. So Let's uh, shut down the shop and we'll run to the parts store and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. Alright guys, sorry there's a train behind me, but uh, this is the old one. Goes up and over the foam. This one's not cooperating, but it'll work. But. I got some foam tape from Home Depot. It was up and over. This piece had to be cut, so I put it back on uh, the foam back on and then put some electrical tape around it. It should be okay. And then this piece, I cut it up to here and then uh, sl slid it on that way. And then the, bo the bottom one just slid all the way on. I basically I just slid it all the way off and then slid it on the new one. So that one's done. See what I'm saying? damn thing ain't it stuck the first time I put it on there but I'd take it off and now it won't stay but when I go to put it on there'll be a cover it'll smash it down 
so it'll work good. Um, the tape that I got is this stuff right here. Sponge window seal. Uh, there's the measurements. If you go into Home Depot, you'll know what to get. Um, so, good stuff. It'll work. I bought two rolls. So, I got the one roll here. That did one, and I got tons left. I didn't know if I need to. I bought two. They're only five bucks. This foam won't stay focused. Uh, we're going to put the foam around this one. And then uh, the reason why I bought extra is because some of the foam around some of the seals in the cab, uh, some of them have deteriorated. So I'm going to scrape those off, put some new foam on them. They'll seal real good. That way I'll good solid seal and all the vents will blow really hard because I won't be losing any air leakage around any of the different transfers into different pieces. So that's what we got. And like I said, uh, that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go into detail on putting it back together. You've seen pretty much how it come apart. And um, so that's it for this video. That's it for this session. Uh, tomorrow... I left the steering wheel in, by the way. Tomorrow, I'm putting it in tonight. It'll be completely installed, ready to go by tonight. Because i got to have this truck out of the shop. Because as you can see... The shop is completely filled with stuff, and the guy that owns it has a project he wants to work on tomorrow. So I gotta get this out of his way. Uh, this is what we were left with out here. So video's going on long enough. I'll edit and we'll see what happens. All right, so I decided to uh, show or talk about this real fast. When you're putting these cases back together. These little alignment pins are for the doors, and they are kind of a bitch. And what I wound up having to do was put it kind of half-assed together, and then the door didn't want to go in its hole, whatever, so I took this rod, and I kind of stuck it through here, and I pushed on the door and pushed it over, and then with some hellacious luck, I was able to get that in. One other one is, there's a door on this back side. I'm gonna try to flip this over. Sorry for shitty camera angles. But this one right here, this door right here, uh, it goes all the way through and it's got a pin that it lines up into, a hole that it lines up into. I don't know if you can see it from the other side. Oh, yeah, you can. I'm going to hold a camera. But there's a pin right there. And that door lines up through there. And the way I had to do that was I pushed on this. Push on that, open that up. And then you can reach in there and you can push that. I can move that door and push on it and move it over. So, and there's a little spring-like deal. I'm not going to take this apart because I don't want to ruin it, ruin the seal because it's already got a seal on it. But down in there, there's a, another flap. So you kind of just got to watch what you're doing and not force everything together. Um, you know, I in the center, I had like that much of a gap when I was sealing the two together. Like right here in the middle, I had like a little bitty tiny gap. And that way I knew, all right, everything's lined up. And then I also tried to move the doors manually with my hand. And um, when that dowel's all the way in and this door will move freely, you're pretty much you're pretty much there. And then, um, you know, put your screws in and all that stuff. This was tight, very tight fit, but I like that because of the foam that I put on it. And um, that's it. I cleaned.